They got about as close to making a spider look cute as I think physically possible. What's up, YouTube? What you know? My name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review of episode number 71 titled Lana Gets Jupiter in our new setup. Now, even as of recording this right now, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I apologize if it's a little bit of a mess for a couple episodes while I'm trying to figure out how exactly I want to do these and how I want to make them better. If you have suggestions for the layout and what you think would be cool, let me know in the comments down below. Now, as always, if you checked out today's episode, let me know what your favorite part of the episode was. And I think there was a lot to choose from in this episode, but let me know what your favorite part was and let me know if you have any different thoughts or any additional thoughts than I do. Before we jump into today's episode, last week we were at Kiawe's family's farm where a guy with an Electivire was trying to get them to sell the farm to him so he could build up a hotel, a resort. And the family is like, no, this is ours. We don't want to do that. So he decides to try and take it by force, which results in a battle. After getting defeated, Kiawe's Marowak does master the Z move and they're able to put him out and are able to get them all arrested. So this episode starts out deep in a forest on Mele Mele Island where we see under the water, we see a little Jupiter running. And he's running really quick and it looks like he's late. It looks like he's late to something. But he runs up and there's a whole bunch of other Jupiter there and there's even an Araquanid that is leading what appears to be a meeting of some sort. But as he's running late, he runs up to the front and he's like, yeah, I finally made it. And the Araquanid hits him on the head. He seems like he's the class clown. Now the Araquanid goes and says, everybody go, and leads them all off. Well, he doesn't go anywhere, but he sends them all off. Uh, and they all try to make their way towards the waters to the surface. But Do, we're going to call him Do, um, seems to be struggling to get to the top. He can't quite swim, so he's got to take a little break on a, on, a, uh, on a little branch. What do you even call that? He's got to take a little break, but eventually he does get to the surface. And we see this really beautiful scene. The animators did a great job in this episode. They're really good at water, but we can see a really beautiful scene going on. And when he does make it to land, he puts his little bubble up. Um, we see him put his bubble and hold on to his bubble with his hand. And he starts walking on the land, but he can't find anybody else. Like I said, he was late to getting to the surface. Everyone else has already taken off. So he sees their footprints. He's like, all right. Here we go, and apparently they're in search of a home. This Ar Araquanid has raised up all of these Dupider, and now it's time for them to go and find their own land. Now that's where the intro goes, and as I said, the episode title was Lana Gets Dupiter. Now I wasn't even going to say the episode title because I thought it was a huge spoiler for what happened. I'm like, that's no fun. How are you already going to know what happened before it even happens? But that's the name of the episode, Lana Gets Dupider. Now we see at the very beginning of the actual episode that the Dupider is walking and as we said before, he's searching for a new body of water to make his own. And we learn a little more about that as the episode goes. But he gets followed by a Picket Peck who's poking at its bubble. Picket Peck is pecking at his bubble. Uh, and it seems to be the Picket Peck is just playing. He doesn't understand what could, what's going on here, but he winds up popping his bubble so the dupe biter's like oh my god and we learn at that point that dupe biter can't breathe without his bubble luckily he tumbles into the water and is able to build up a new uh, a new bubble once he gets back onto the land there's a little and a lowland dug trio that juggles him between between all three of his heads and eventually launches him way up into the air where he lands on top of a very high tree and he looks very scared he's looking at he's like oh my god what am i doing up here he's very scared of heights um but he looks over and there's a salandit staring at him and they just have this little moment where they're staring at each other. And then the Salandit's like, oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to eat you. And of course, he starts to, he starts to like go for, we've seen this many times before. But he starts to like build up a fire type attack. And Dupider does a string shot and wraps up, his, uh, wraps up his mouth. And it eventually explodes inside of his mouth. But the Salandit scares, scares Dupider off. Dupider falls into a new body of water. Now in this water, there is another dupider, and we find that each dupider has to find its own 
water source. So these two start competing. They start building up a bubble. One's bigger than the other, one's bigger than the other. And eventually the other Dewpider wins and Dew gets knocked out. He's gotta go find somewhere else. As he's going around, he does constantly get attacked by other Pokemon. And at night he winds up resting and he's really tired because he's trying to find a place to live. And he sees these Morlul and their light attracts him. So he starts following them and they lead him all the way. Well, they don't do it on purpose, but they're going to this tree that just so happens to be by the ocean. And Dew gets to see the ocean for the first time and he's amazed. All he's seen all his life is just these small ponds where he grew up with this Araquanid. So he sees the ocean for the first time and he's amazed and he jumps in it and we see all these awesome water Pokemon just hanging out. And then all of them get scared and they start to hide and right below Dew, there's a Sharpedo. So Dew starts to run away because the Sharpedo is trying to eat him and he runs away, gets on land and retreats until morning. Now the next morning, Dew just so happens to be at the exact same place that Lana and all the others are. And as Dew is walking up, Poplio puts, on, puts a bubble on Lana's face. I'm sure this is just, it was before school time, so they were just playing. Poplio puts a bubble on Lana's face and Dew looks up and you know, I think the editors and the animators of this series just think they're hilarious and they're just giggling the entire time they're making this. Because the little theme that you hear when a marriage starts, if I can remember, I'll edit it in. Uh, but anyway, as, as, a, as that starts, Dupider sees Lana wearing a bubble and you can see the hearts in his eyes and he's obviously very in love with Lana. In fact, it starts to get, his bubble starts to get hot because he gets heated up and his bubble bursts and he lands on and as we learned, he can't breathe without that bubble. So Ash is like, what was that sound? And they all come over and they're like, oh my gosh, it's a Pokemon. What else would it be? But anyway, Lana comes over and she's like, oh my gosh, that's a Dupider. It can't breathe, picks it up and jumps into the water. Now that's where the, uh, the break happened, the commercial happened, and after the commercial, we see Lana underwater with this Dewpider, holding it like a baby, trying to get it to wake up. Dewpider wakes up, sees Lana, still's got this bubble on, is like, oh my God, and freaks out. At that point, Lana grabs on to Poplio, as she always does, celebrating that this Dewpider is okay, but Dewpider gets very, very jealous of Poplio and starts to attack it. And Lana's like, okay, wait, 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 wait. We gotta get out of here. Dewpider, you go home. We're going back to the surface. So they get up on the surface and they start talking about, you know, yeah, the Dewpider's okay. And Dew walks up behind them. And uh, he has his bubble on and Poipole comes over and pops his bubble. So Dew gets mad, tries to attack po uh, Poipole, misses, of course. Before they head off to the school, Dew seems very attached to Lana. Like literally attached to Lana. Grabs onto her leg and will not let go as long as she's wearing that bubble. So they head off to the school and at the school, Lana's talking about how they met this Dew Pider uh, and Poplio looks extremely jealous. Now, as is the usual, all of the other Pokemon come around Lana and Dew looks jealous that these other Pokemon are approaching uh, Lana and it's just a it's a very weird I thought they were maybe gonna take this another way of like James's Marini uh, and many other Pokemon that we've seen in the past that are just way too attached to their trainers luckily sp slight spoilers they didn't take it that way but Lily eventually asks what are you gonna do when you have to eat you have that bubble on your head you can't just wear it all the time and Lana goes well when I have to eat I'll just take the bubble off and pops the bubble with a pencil and Dew looks up and is like, oh my God, and jumps off of Lana and starts to run away and starts to attack the Pokemon, but starts to run away. And we see his thought process. He wants to go find his pond. So everyone's like, okay, wait, let, we, you know, let, let's, let's help him find a place. And they start to follow him. But as they get outside the water at the Pokemon school, Dewpider's like, oh, I could do this and jumps inside the water. But as he's evaluating it, I guess he decides that he doesn't like it. So that's not where he wants to stop. So he gets out and he's pacing back and forth. And he's like, what am I going to do? He's like, okay, I guess I'm going to go search around. 
And all of the kids are like, okay, well, we can help you. We can help you find, you know, we're, we're, we can help this thing find its water. And Lana's like, no, you can't do that. You've got to let this dew powder find its own water. So Kukui's like, okay, change of plans for today. We are going to observe dew find its new home. Now they follow him around the city and as he's going around he gets knocked off one place, knocked off another place, it's not working out for him. And eventually they come up to this area where Dew is like, yeah, I like it. And he starts to build his nest with his spider web and there's a surskit in the wa this water. And the, sur the surskit's like, uh, hello, this is my water, like what are you doing? And they start a fight. And the fight's, the fight's going decently. and. Till uh, apparently, hold on, before I jump into the fight, apparently Surskit and Dupiter are enemies similar to Zangoose and Seviper. I did not know that and that does not make any sense to me. How can Surskit and Dup... It kind of does make sense to me because they're the two Pokemon I guess that deal with Do the most. And don't you dare put a Latios or Latias comment. Do it. Anyway, I guess they are enemies like Zangoose and Seviper are. Um, but Dew starts to get overpowered, especially when this Surskit fires off a signal beam. I didn't realize that this Surskit was such high level, uh, but Dew starts to get scared. He's like, wait, hold, hold on, you know signal beam. I don't, I, I don't know if I can handle this. And Lana in the back has had Poplio put a bubble over her head so that this, uh, so that Dew will, you know, really like her and will listen to her. And she's like, yeah, you can win. And Dew's like, all right then. And <laughs> Surskit launches another signal beam. And Dew's like, nah fam. And uses a, uses mirror coat by enlarging its bubble, uses mirror coat, launches the attack back, and then starts to attack, uses spider web to lock down Surskit. They start fighting one another back and forth, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Surskit evolves into Masquerain. Dew is very scared of this Masquerain, but the Masquerain just flies off. And Kukui's like, the Surskit has evolved, he's ready to move on to a new world as a Masquerain, and everyone starts celebrating because Dewpider wins the pawn. Where did that come from? That was not the outcome that I was expecting, but Dewpider's happy, he's, Dew's happy. He's like, all right, this is my pawn. So back at the school, after the, at, at night, like when class is over, they're all leaving and um, everyone's like, what do you think Dew's up to? And Lana's like, probably building its nest, etc., etc. We see Dew at its pond, building its nest, thinking about Lana, and the episode ends. Lana gets Dewpider. So is that like maybe in the future are we gonna see this Dewpider again? I think we absolutely will see this Dewpider again. We have to. Lana's next Pokemon, it would make sense to be this Dewpider, would it not? I don't think she has a wishy-washy. It, uh, it was a very interesting ending. It's not the way that I thought it was going to end. But anyway, that was it for this episode. Let me know in the comments down below two things again, or I guess I asked for a whole lot of stuff. But let me know what your favorite part was from this episode. Let me know if you have any different thoughts. Now, apparently there were two episodes this weekend, and I didn't realize that. Um, so the next episode, I honestly don't know it, when it will be out, but we will have it out sometime soon. If you enjoyed our review, hit the thumbs up down below, and we'll see you in the next Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review. Until then, spread some positivity, be the light, and have a blessed day.